thanks for the introduction. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, I am Renata Araujo, but it's completely understandable if you talk it in another way. And uh, I work in industrial cybersecurity team uh, of Braskin. Braskin is a chemical and petrochemical company. And we are more than 80,000 members and we have um, 40 industrial sites around the world. So, um, okay, I'm talking a little bit first about our structure. Uh, indeed, uh, IT and process control in Braskin, they have two different cybersecurity areas. Okay, and uh, we have a separate program, but we talk to each other all the time and we make a great effort to, to change information and share and to make just one because the company cannot run two cybersecurity uh, programs uh, completely different. So, as we are uh, like a, a separate area in the company and IT in a corporate way, they are more relevant than process control. So we, we need something like a tool to justify our existence and our investments. So as we run an independent uh, program of cybersecurity, uh, we, we need something to, to measure our performance and to, to really uh, show our cybersecurity program as a success. So, uh, we have this index we call the cybersecurity KPI, and it was created in uh, 2014. So, at that time, uh, we just needed a management tool to, to measure the industrial environment and our cybersecurity level, like a maturity level. And with this index, it was possible to monitor our uh, protection deployments. So we do this all, this, all the years. We, we measure the, our cybersecurity KPI in the beginning of the year, and we, we have a goal for the end of the year. So we can uh, monitor how we are going on deployments. And with this index, we also have like a common uh, evaluation method, so we can compare actually uh, different industrial sites, one for example in Brazil and the other in Germany and the other in Mexico, so we can speak the same language. And we can show our improvements in numbers. It's very important when you're talking to non-technical people, so when you have to make a high level report, so it's, it's, it works a lot. And also it's a, an investment prioritization tool. So uh, with this index, we can uh, see where we should put our money. So uh, this index is actually based on ISO 27002. It's, it's not an industrial standard. It's, uh, it's from the IT side. Uh, but as the, this standard have uh, all the protection items listed, and there are uh, 14 sections, but there are sub-items, and it's more than 100 items of protections. And what we did was we picked the, the, the controls that made sense for us, that were more important for our environment. So, these are the evaluation items for our cybersecurity KPI. As you see, there is a con correspondence to an sub-item of the standard, okay? So, uh, we have all these items here, network segmentation, logical access, uh, remote access, antivirus, updates, backups, and what we do is we try to uh, measure or average or even count in each site how we are doing in each of these items. And we also have different weights 
for this. So uh, it's, it's very important for us because uh, it, by the end we can get a global number for the entire company or we can have it by site or by country or even by protection item. So I can, I can make an analysis like how I'm doing in backup in my company. So, well, uh, here I'm going to talk a little about each item I'm going through. Uh, but the first one is network segmentation. We have a, a network model uh, established. So we just try to, to make it like standard in all the, the plants. It's very difficult because uh, Braskin is made for, from uh, very different, different companies they bought. So uh, each company has the, their own history and their own vendors. So we try to make it standard. Uh, with logical access management, it's also a big challenge because uh, in level one and two, we almost don't have um, logical access implemented. So it's something we, we measure too. Um, talking about secure remote access, uh, it's very interesting because when I started this program, uh, secure, secure remote access was one thing that the, the uh, process control engineers, they really thought it was important. So I focused on this one because uh, their perception is that, oh, is this, the, this is the most dangerous things in, in our sites. So uh, we, we worked a lot with this to improve the security. So antivirus and white listing, it's really challenging too because um, we need to ask all the DCS vendors if they certify or not our solutions. So every time we need to, uh, we want to renew licenses or for example, the white listing application, we, we did it last year. So we had to talk to everybody to see if they agreed or not with the solution we, we wanted to buy. And patches that is a very big issue. Uh, we are really in the beginning we, we make it with the, like the, the MES layer servers, but we, we still can't manage this in the, in the other levels. And also, uh, talking about backup, uh, we have like very strong definitions and we make it really standard, but we still have the, the DCS layer which is it's kind of managed by the vendors in Braskin. So we have, as we have this model, uh, we ha we have to be a little bit flexible to to integrate them to our uh, standard, and it, it's very interesting because uh, when you talk about um, th this kind of uh, solution, uh, for example, in IT side. Uh, you can pick all your uh, very critical devices. In you can enclosure them in a room and say, this is the, the data center, and these are critical, and I'm going to rule it. Uh, from the IT side, it's completely different. Uh, as the devices nearby the process, it's more critical. So it's not a, never a centralized solution. So we need to be flexible. And we also control hardware and software life cycle. Uh, that is a, a big challenge. It has to be to uh, we make inventory and also change management to keep this uh, very controlled. And we also have internal pol policies and the standards. And we share this all the time with the IT people. So we do it together, and some of our standards are really mirrors for, from the IT side, because they had already standards, and we wanted them to understand our documentation. So we made like mirrors, uh, highlighting which is different in each side. 
And we also have uh, disaster recovery plans that is very complex as we have a lot of different sites. So we have to, to make a lot of different plans. And also talking about inventory change and configuration management. As you see, uh, most of these items, they're not only uh, process or only technology. For example, for this, I have a technology solution that supports uh, this management, but it's also a process. So we must uh, see both sides. Okay, and talking about physical security, I think physical security today is uh, one of my biggest problems because I have very old plants and it's not possible to change everything uh, and it's not going to change. And it's very difficult to, to make the barriers and make, make it more protected. So, and risk monitoring, we are trying to implement it, and by now we are trying to implement it with the, the IT side, actually. Okay, so talking a little bit about Industry uh, 4.0, uh, as, as I see this cycle, I always see cybersecurity there. And it's interesting because I don't consider like cybersecurity a separate item. It's like a requirement. We need cybersecurity to support all the other technologies. Okay, so uh, as, as like digital transformation is becoming, uh, cybersecurity will, will become more and more relevant. So uh, higher investments will be required and we need to be ready to show our results. So with this index, uh, we had a lot of uh, success uh, showing uh, how things are going and all the time when we get a new plant, uh, we go there with this methodology and people really understand. So uh, we need to cooperate and I think that it's very important to measure our work in every ways. Thank you very much. <laughs>